Welcome back to Tactical Alliance Gaming. Now, we got a treat for you today. We are joined by the one, the only, Ivy League Gaming. Ivy, thank you so much for joining. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. So, Ivy, we're going to link to her channel in the description below because I know you're going to want to see the second half of this video. And not only that, she does stream on Twitch Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So I will also link to her Twitch again in the description below, which is, you know, where we kind of put all that stuff. So anyway, so we're going to go over our favorite champions, legendary and epics from each faction. All right, so you're not going to want to miss this because we're going to explain why we like them, not just say, oh, hey, this champ's awesome. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more into depth <laughs> than that, but not too much because we don't want this to be like a three-hour video. All right. And only the champions that we have. Yes, only the champions that we have. <laughs> so, which is fun for me because I'm, uh, I'm definitely lacking in the legendary department in, a, in, quite a, in a few areas. So we will start with the Banner Lords. Now this is funny. So originally we re-recorded, the audio got screwed up, or we recorded it, the audio got screwed up. So we're back doing it again, which lucky for me, I have pulled two Septimus since then. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. So we are gonna start, um, I think with the legendary, I think I am gonna go Septimus. Uh, the guy is a beast still. Uh, to this day, uh, my Spider-20 farm team, uh, which, you know, I mean, we all know Spider-20s is typically the better way to go for tournaments, stuff like that, as far as point-to-energy ratios. Um, the guy's a monster, though. I mean, we all know him. We all love him if we have him. We hate him if we don't. Um, you know, I mean, he's all about this A2. This thing is an absolute, just, it cracks. Uh, mine not even built well. Uh, he's still cracking, you know, for almost two million. Uh, it's it's insane. Yeah, uh, my legendary would be Septimus as well. I can't I can't say otherwise. I actually also pulled a second Septimus <laughs> since we last talked. <laughs> so now I have two Septimai Septimuses. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know if I'm going to build him or if I'm going to save him as a boost to the original one yet with the new dupe system coming out. I don't know. So I think I'm just not going to touch him for now and wait and see when the new dupe system comes out, if it's worth sacrificing one to put into the other or yeah, hold on for now. But yeah, I don't think there's much else to say on Septimus. He's just a monster. He hits single target nuke and his A1 is really fun for cleanup. It is. It is. I did talk to... Uh... To the raid rock star, I mean Hell Hades, um, and asked him if anything had been leaked about the uh, the uh, the H the, uh, the stat boost um, with uh, using your uh, Legos into another one. Um, he said they're staying pretty tight lipped about that. They are, yeah. I'm in the chat as well. Yeah, I didn't. Well, I didn't know if he heard anything kind of off on the side. Nah, um, I don't but... think they're gonna let that stuff slide. <laughs> no, I it'll don't be think out there so. in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would, it would. Um, all right, so as far as Epic goes, I have, absolutely have to go with my girl, Ursula. Um, absolutely a beast. She's in pretty much every team that I have. Um, if I run anything with her, any kind of a revive, she's it. Uh, you know, I mean, she has the uh, turn meter drop on her A1. She has a decreased attack and increased attack on her A2. She has the increased defense, strengthen, uh, and revive on her A3. And it's a full team revive, uh, which is even better. Um, you know, and then she does have a speed aura in Doom Tower by 24%. Uh, her kid is amazing. She is an absolute monster, uh, a phenomenal support champion. She looks really cool, too. I'm, I'm actually she really does. pleased with how the devs you know, did her, uh, did her, her design. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and she's <laughs> awesome. Like. She really is. She's probably out of all the epics in the game. I would say she is my absolute favorite. Nice. She's one. I definitely underutilize. I still haven't really got her going in anything yet, even though I have one shame on me. Well, I do uh, have a guide <laughs> on her Ivy. <laughs> I, I got it. I have her bill. I just don't use her. Um, but I have to say my favorite champion is Stagnite, just because of how well good of a carry he is through dungeons early on. And, and even still to endgame, I still use him in Fire Knight. 
the decreased speed debuff really helps, as well as, of course, decrease the defense and decrease attack. He's just a really great champion that we were lucky enough to get in the battle pass for free if you did that ba back in the day. I wasn't um, around then. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's just one of my favorite champions that I still use very highly in this game. Yeah, I still use him in Fire Knight. Uh, in Fire Knight. Um, he is a solid champ. He is a very solid champ. I use, there's a few places I use him still. It's hard, though, because I do have Ghostborn, too. So, you know, <laughs> for that decreased defense. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, but he is he's a phenomenal champ. He really is. All right, on to High Elves. Gotta go with my girl, Lysandra. She was one of the first Legos that I ever pulled. And uh, I use her like crazy. Anytime I need turn meter control, she's the girl that comes in. Um, she's actually a pretty good counter for Hedgy uh, in Arena as well because of her A1. Uh, she does transfer deb all debuffs from this champion to the target, which is great if Hedgy locks her out. Um, she goes back mm -hmm. with her A1, locks him out. Um, she does have a full turn meter drop. Now, now we've heard in, you know, in other videos from other content creators and, and everything else, you know, there's a 100% turn meter drop, but, you know, we all know turn meters can go a little bit above that. Hers is a full Tar uh, turn meter depletion <clears throat> um, not quite as effective in 21 to 25 dungeons anymore uh, but she's still very solid and then 30% uh, increased speed buff on allies and fills the turn meter of allies by 30% um, and decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 30% on a 4 turn cooldown <laughs> with a speed in all battles aura by 24%. Phenomenal for Arena. Um, I used her for a long time as my speed lead. Um, she's still viable running alongside an Arbiter. Um, I've come across a couple of teams in Arena that give me a hard time running Arbiter and Lissandra. Um, but absolutely phenomenal champion. Yeah, I wish I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fed it. I pulled a Duke yeah. early on, and I ended up feeding it and using it as a book into that one. And I'm kicking myself <laughs> to this day because oh, of it. Yeah, two of her would be great for a tag. Uh -huh. So I don't have Lysandra, but I'll go with her counterpart and Miss Progress Mission herself, Arbiter. She's definitely worth the grind. She's super account game changing for Arena speed lead and her boosts. Um, even her A2 just decreasing the duration of an enemy buff. And of course, AoE revive and a tier meter boost at the same time. She's just an all around great champion and definitely worth pushing hard in your missions to get her. She, yeah, she's definitely worth the, worth the grind. And it's a pretty crazy grind too early on. It um, is. <laughs> you know, but I mean, she does. She looks pretty cool, too. You know, I mean, she looks awesome. She does. I'm still trying to figure out, though. You can tell these, these all these champions were designed by men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say she's, she's probably got the perfect um, weight. Uh, that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll leave that one for later on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different tier list. <laughs> yeah. Sexiest champions in raid. Um, For epics. Oh, that, that's a tough one because I'm lacking in, lep in epics for this faction, hmm. but I've got to go Royal Guard. Um, I've got a couple of them. I think three. Um, I've got two built. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, great nuke. Uh, but, I mean, on top of that, too, you know, I mean, they're great in other content. 60% decreased defense on their A1. Uh, you know, I mean, they've got an AoE. And obviously, everybody knows her takedowns, so we don't even have to worry about that. But they do have the 30% uh, decrease speed for two turns. And, you know, 60% of a 25% turn meter drop on the target. So, I mean, they're, he's got use in other areas of the game other than just as like a spider nuke or, you know, something like mm -hmm. that. You know, they, he's got utility outside of that, which is great. And, I mean, ally attack and dungeon by 35%. And, I mean, for the most part, I don't know too many people that really crank up attack for the, uh, dungeons. Usually it's speed, defense, crit rate. Um, but, I mean, you know, in some situations with some comps, you know, that uh, attack boost might be beneficial. Yeah, I love Royal Guard. I don't really use him too much these days anymore. Um, but he was definitely helpful for getting me through early on in mid-game. He's still definitely viable end-game, though. He really is. 
Oh, but yeah. I think I, my favorite, I'll have to go with Tyrell, who I also don't use that much anymore, but getting me to where I am, he's so helpful. AoE decrease defense on the A2, and of course, a decrease attack on the A1 makes him a perfect clan boss champion for traditional teams. His A3 is not really necessary for clan boss, of course, as it decreases turn meter and stun, and that's not really helpful, but it does hit hard. Like, it actually cranks out good damage, so I actually don't think it hurts to even leave that A3 in there for clan boss just because of how hard it actually hits damage-wise, but he's a great champion. He can be used every part of the game because of his kit. We got de just It's just a good all-around kit, and he's two champions and one for clan boss, so can't go wrong there. And the aura. Yeah, mine. Uh, mine's still at fifty. <laughs> he has been for like oh, almost a year. He's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm horrible. You know, I. My problem is, I'll like uh, apothecary. I've never had one at sixty. I get him to fifty. I get him ascended. I pull a great legendary, and then I'm like, oh look, they food. Replace that. Yeah. You know, I've got New one at fifty. Object. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. You know, I got one at fifty. Now that I'm, I'm dead set. I'm taking him to sixty. Um, but I just haven't uh, quite gotten there yet because I've got a list that's kind of hard to come by. Um, on to Sacred <laughs> Order, and this one's mm -hmm. tough. The only three legendaries I've got are solid. I have Roshgard, Martyr. I've got two Martyrs, and uh, Cardiel. Um, <laughs> so this is definitely a tough one. Um, as much as I love Roshgard and Cardiel, I've got to go with my girl Martyr. Uh, old school OP champ. Uh, she was, you know, she is the counterattack champion that I use, uh, even on my unkillable clan boss team. Uh, she is it. Um, you know, I mean, she's got the decreased defense on her a on her A1. She's got the counterattack and increased defense on her A2. She's got the decrease attack and provoke on her A3 with the uh defense on all battles by 33 percent i mean this girl is a monster she can hit hard uh she's not like you know septimus hard but she's she's a very solid champion and she's kind of a pain in arena too actually i've come across a few teams that use her and that provoke can really be kind of a pain in the butt definitely I wish I had her. She's someone I never got as well, so. You know, I always had Skull Crusher early, and I was fine with that for clan boss sake, so I never really was too concerned about getting a martyr. I mean, I wouldn't hate her, but I don't really need her at this point in the game, I don't think, honestly. Yeah, I still but... don't have a Valk, so having two martyrs, oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's like, ah, do I want to build a second? <laughs> I don't really think I need to, but... <laughs> but dupe system You coming. have my favorite. You have my favorite that I have as well. Cardio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't not say Cardiel. I use him in literally everything except Clan Boss, probably. I swear, I, he's just so freaking good. I use him everywhere in all of the Doom Tower, everything. He's just the perfect ally attack champion. That de uh, the revive on death buff cannot be removed, so he's still good for things like the Griffin. Oh, yeah. Um, he takes off buffs, but then can just not that one. It's It's such a great kit, and I've loved having him in my roster. Ever since, he's probably my most highly used champion at this point. Yeah, he is my ally attack champion for my blender comp. Uh, yeah, he's perfect blender champion. Oh, blender yeah. Champion. It was him or Longbeard, and uh, obviously Cardio won out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry, Longbeard, you're demoted. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, that one hurt. All right, so <clears throat> epic. Oh, it's rough. This one is rough, but I've got to go Mordecai. Um, I didn't keep him during the fusion. Uh, was he part of the Brogni fusion? I think wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, I ended up using him for Brogni, which I don't regret. Um, I ended up pulling him a few weeks later, but that AOE HP burn, monster. Uh, you know because he places it. I mean, affinity doesn't matter as long as he's got the accuracy. Mm -hmm. Um, just absolutely crazy. He's a phenom. He's a great champ. Uh, you know, I mean, the only way I use him on my Spider 25 team, actually, alongside Mother Sabelle. Um, she... I've seen her in a lot of interesting comps, actually. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it was weird. I, I've got Masteries on her. She's got no gear whatsoever. And she's nothing more than a sacrificial <laughs> lamb in there. Um, but I turned in my fastest Spider 25 runs with her. So, you know, obviously she stays. Uh but uh, alongside Mordecai, it's it's phenomenal. 
You know, I mean, just the heels and, oh, that she throws on him, keep him up and that HP burn. He is a monster. He is an absolute monster. I think for me, I mean, I have every single one except for Godseeker and Neri. So I think, but I think I have to go, even though Deacon's amazing, as he should be said probably, I have to go Inquisitor Shamel. He was one of the funnest additions to my lineup. Um, I made him hit really hard with that nice, like, you know, like 270% crit damage. And his his A2 just max. It is so, it's so, so hard. He just really not. And so does his A1. I mean, he's got amazing multipliers. He, he hits like a truck, and I love using him alongside of Septimus. It's just two hard nukers to help get down a boss in Doom Tower. That's kind of been my strategy, especially with the earlier bosses. But it even worked later on with the higher up, like, um, Eternal Dragon, for example. And he's the anti-fear champion, so gotta love that. Yeah, I've gotta build one. <laughs> he's so good. He hits so hard. I've pulled a ton of... I've pulled... Oh, I don't even know. I can't even count how many of them I've pulled, and I've fed every one of them. Uh, <laughs> Shame. It's, Shame. you know, Shame. my problem is... So <laughs> I used to wail hard. I don't need more, but, you know, it's... I'd get so many legendaries that were good champs. I'm like, oh, I got to get this thing six starred. And he's sitting there at 50. And I'm like, well, bye bye, Inquisitor Shamel. <laughs> oh, poor Shammy. I know it. <laughs> uh, so, Barbarians. Oh, the four I have are good. Obviously, I don't have Valk. Um, no Turval, no Ursuga. Um, but. <laughs> this one's tough uh you know there is an underdog that i have an elder scarg who's a phenomenal champion especially since his buff um he's a great champion uh but i gotta go sill um you know i gotta show some love to the free to play uh you know sill of the drakes phenomenal champion free to play login reward which makes her so easy to get just play the freaking game um, you know, but she does have the, the revive on her A3 with the ally protection for two turns. And, you know, recent information coming out in the last couple of months, we all know how crazy ally protect is. Uh, you know, she AOE double hit, 20% uh, chance of a stun on her A2. Her A1, she's got to decrease speed. And she's got, a you know, a 30% chance of a turn meter drop. Uh, you know, she's, her, her passive is, you know, she heals all allies by 10%. Uh, at the start of every turn and a 30% increased speed buff on a random ally for two turns. It's, she is a beast, you know? I mean, even late game players, you know, she's, she's in so many teams. Yeah, I actually, I have a Valkyrie, but I actually think I'm still going to say Syl. Honestly, like, I use Syl way more than I use Valkyrie. Valkyrie's been benched for me because I haven't put her in a, a gear properly for Arena yet. That should change. But I had to, I did have Valkyrie and Clan Boss, and it did help me bump up my damage. But I mean, Valkyrie is really hard to tune for Clan Boss. You have to do very specific comps that are affinity friendly for Valkyrie, which I have done, and that was my last tune before my Bat Eater. But it's hard, and it's I don't know. I just I feel like Sill is just so versatile and so important in Doom Tower. There's so many bosses. Like, I think the Griffin, you don't want to use, like, a Siffy who brings someone back with 100% turn meter because then that turn meter gets turned against you and then you just get knocked straight back down. She brings them up yep. a little bit lower, puts ally protect on them, and then she also has a lot more control. And then, of course, yeah, her decreased speed debuff and healing. Like, she's just so great for Doom Tower. And I, I remember when I kept seeing Stu using her and Silar and some other, like, more free-to-play friendly champs in Doom Tower. And I was like, what's the big deal with Syl? I don't really get it. And then I finally started to actually use her, finally built her properly, and now she's one of my favorite champions to use in all parts of the game, at least, well, I should say all parts. In Doom Tower or um, stuff like that where you need a little bit of control, like, or dungeons she'd be great for as well. Yeah, I keep her in Relentless just for the, uh, the champion. Yeah, exactly. You know, the ch yeah, it's, she's, she's crazy good. She really is. So, let's see. Epics. Hmm. I haven't used Ferric in the fat. I've got him at 50. Me either. I have one, but I haven't used him either. <laughs> I just fed a dupe of him uh, the other day, actually. Um, oh, no. I think. I might not have. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> it would have been yesterday at stream, and I don't even remember. Um, yeah, one of those <laughs> days. Uh, but I'm going to go with Armina, actually. So 
Armina, she's the reason I got Barbarians 21 down. Uh, three starred, first shot. Uh, she was it. Um, you know, I mean, I come in with all 10, and, you know, I mean, I, I got some good champs in the Barbarian faction, uh, but she was the one that put me over the top. You know, on her A1, she's got 35% chance of a stun. Now, it is single target, um, which, I mean, it, it's helpful, especially if you manual. You know, you can pick the biggest threat, try and get that stun off. You know, you can book her out. Uh, I don't even have mine booked, I don't think. Um, you know, she's got the AoE on her A2 with a 75% chance of a 60% decreased defense um, debuff for two turns. And she steals 7.5% of the turn meter from targets under decreased defense debuffs, which is kind of cool with that turn meter steal. Um, and then she does decrease turn meters uh, by 20% um, on all enemies and a 75% chance of placing a stun uh, for one turn on enemies who have their turn meters fully depleted. Um, you know, so, I mean, she... It's kind of weird because she doesn't have anything really over the top, but the utility on her is great. Mm -hmm. um, and she does I have just got one. <laughs> she does have a turn meter by ten percent each time an enemy receives a stun. So I mean, you're talking even in outside of faction wars, you know, you pair her with a sill or you know even like a rowbar. You know, I mean, it uh, it can get a little crazy, but she is a great champion. You know, like I said, she's the reason I got Barbarian Twenty One down. Nice. Yeah, I am looking forward to building her. She's on my list of people I want to get going, especially even just for Faction Wars to help make my run faster and have a solid D. I mean, I, I have, of course, a War Maiden who is mediocrely built. I have a Vala who's def decreased defense and mediocrely built, but I'd really like to get Armina as my main champion for that role in Barbarian Faction. Mm. Um, she's not built yet. I think this is probably my least favorite set of epics out of all the factions, to be honest. I don't, there's yeah. no one that I'm like, oh my god, I love them when I stare at this screen. But I'd probably have to say what helped me with Faction Wars the most was probably Sky Touch Shaman. Mm -hmm. Just because of her support, her healing, the block revive, block debuffs. I mean, that was just super helpful in Faction Wars in general. And and her, her passive's annoying when she fears herself and it doesn't work. And you're like, come on, it's like 50-50, are you going to actually get to use your abilities? I remember that being quite frustrating. But <laughs> she's a really good champion, and she looks really cool. Um... But yeah, she was she was probably my key to finishing faction wars for Barbarian personally. That those fe that feather cape really does look cool. We're gonna turn fast <laughs> that way because I don't know if we can show uh, you know bare butt on YouTube, but uh, sure we can. <laughs> but yeah, she does look kind of cool. Um, I've never built one though. There's so many champions that are good champs that I've never built. It's pathetic. Yeah. Same. Same. <laughs> my my. I still haven't touched Fushan. Everyone yells at me for that one. I did, you know, I did build him in stream, but he kind of sucks um, as far as how I have him built. Um, <laughs> but that's He's not the champion, that's just build. me. Anyway. <laughs> All righty. All right, so Ogren Tribes. Yeah, yeah Ogren. This one's easy for me to pick because I only have one legendary from this entire faction. And that's <laughs> Ignatius. Um, at least it's a good one. <laughs> you know, at least it is a good uh good legendary from the faction um i really i don't use him as much as i should probably um i've got him built i just i don't really use him a whole lot uh, i mean he does have the 15 percent chance of a stun on his a1 but it is single target you know he does have uh aoe with a 50 percent chance of a provoke on his a2 uh, and he does have the 75% uh, chance of an AOE HP burn for two turns, and it can't be resisted on his A3 with a, uh, a defense on all battles by 25% passive or uh, aura. So, I mean, definitely he is a good HP burn champion, you know, if you do need one. Uh, he's definitely very good for that role. Um, I just got in the position now where I've got other champions that fill that role. Mm -hmm. And it's, for, the, for the HP burn, yeah. Yeah, it, it sucks. I mean, he hits hard. You know, he definitely hits pretty hard. Um, I've seen him, I forget, what, I think, was it Stu or Hell Hades? So one of them, you had him as a campaign farmer. Um, That's what, we talked about that last time. Yeah, so, I mean, he can fill that role if you have him. Um, you know, but I've just, I, it's weird. I've, I was so happy when I pulled him, and I get to looking at my teams, and I'm like, where am I going to fit him in? <laughs> He's he's my answer too, actually. Even though I, I have Bagan and I have Gergo, but I don't have either one of them built yet. They're on my list. Well, well, actually, Gergo is built. Um, I just finally got Gergo fully booked 
um, big and I haven't built yet. So Ignatius I have built in Lifesteal Gear to solo Nightmare Campaign. And he okay. does do that. So he's a great champion to solo Nightmare Campaign. He's easy to build because he's defense-based. In Lifesteal Gear, he's solid champion. Um, the only thing is if you're looking to farm Nightmare Campaign, a la for like uh, CBC to get points because it's higher points, it's not really worth it for him because the farming is too slow. He's not, he's not like a Ray. Ray's the answer for that. Otherwise, you might as well just farm Brutal because... There's energy spent versus how long it takes. It's better just to do Brutal. Um, but he is a good champion if you're just looking to push through Nightmare Campaign and you're stuck. You can get him solidly built in Lifesteal Gear with some... It does take some good stats, but he's definitely my favorite as well. Okay. Epics. Now, this is kind of a crazy uh, category because there's some good epics. Uh, there's, <laughs> there are a few good epics in this in this faction. Um I mean, you know, we're going into Eurogrim. Even after his, his nerf, uh, he's still a pretty solid champion. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have him. Um, Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> desperately wanted him. Uh, but then, you know, we have Skull Crusher. We've got a Cult Brawler. We have, of course, Maneater. Um, you know, last time we recorded it, I wasn't going to go Maneater, but I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I actually, everybody knows the Maneater. I've got four of them. Um, I've got two built for my clan boss team. I've got two at 50 I'm building up for faction wars so I can run a four meter, a four man eater faction wars team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cause I mean, let's face it. If I can get it speed tuned, right. It's just going to be ridiculous. Uh, it might take a while, but you know, it, it's ridiculous. Um, them and Ignatius for faction wars just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, he does, he's got the decreased attack on his a1 if it's a crit he does have a turn meter on his a2 and everybody knows that a3 with the unkillable and the block debuffs um just and i mean ally hp in dungeons by 33 percent. i mean situational um but he is the champion that i know there's a lot of people still looking for still looking for a second one um you know he's kind of that uh you know that unicorn that everybody looks for yeah i was i i definitely bought some void packs to make sure i got him and it worked i got two of them in the same run and i it's game changing getting him it's impossible not to say he's like the best there because yeah. like for me i have a bad eater and that is just life changing quality of life changing with click a couple set the ai click it and just walk away and never have to touch it again i'm done with clan boss and done the best i'm gonna do as far as improving is just getting some damage up or maybe if i get draco instead of fane for example that way i can get a more solid one key um, on all affinities but i'm still working on getting one key on all affinities but man he makes it so much easier i mean if i didn't have one of course i would say skull crusher because skull crusher got me to the point i am right now without skull crusher i couldn't have imagined progressing so well in clan boss he's such a good champion with ally protect um and he's just he's i mean obviously the counter attack is his big thing but that ally protect is super helpful as well he's a solid champion yeah man eater he, you gotta say man eater is definitely my favorite he's changed my life <laughs> he has he really has and i'm only running i'm just running the easy double man eater i'm not even i haven't even gone anything crazy with a bad eater or you know anything like that um I mean, granted, I'm only a two-key Ultra Nightmare, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm running them with Creela and, and Martyr and Nethril, actually. Um, I didn't like Fane, actually. When I put her in, I had a decrease in damage over from Nethril. Um, but, yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to really playing with some other comps, uh, you know, once I get the other two built. That way I don't screw up my, uh, my regular clan boss team. Yep. <laughs> so, Lizard Men... This one right here is so easy. I got to go with my boy, Krisk. Um, I forgot you have him. <laughs> I heard that huff, Ivy. <laughs> 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 Absolutely love this guy. I pulled him from a single void two days after his times 10 ended. I uh, got to void from Doom Tower. Uh, popped it because I'm horrible about holding shards. And uh, out pops Chris, and I was like, yep, that was absolutely worth it. Um, crazy. I use him in my Go Second Arena team. I use it. Oh, phenomenal. I use this guy. It, 
anywhere where I need a little bit of survivability, um, I throw him in. I love to pair him with Brogny. <laughs> I wish I had both. Oh, <laughs> uh, which is, it gets crazy. Yeah. He puts his shield on. Brogny keeps building him and build. It's just, yeah, it gets a little wild. Um, but, you know, he does have the decreased speed, the 30% decreased speed on his A1. Uh, you know, he does have the ally protect, the continuous heal on his A2, and increases the duration of ally buffs uh, by one turn on his A2. He's got the provoke, increased defense, increased speed uh, on his A3. And, you know, his passive is, I mean, we all know it. He, he Right out of the gate, he puts a shield on. Actually, even, I didn't realize this until I really started playing with my go second team in arena. He'll put that shield on even before Hedgy goes. Mm -hmm. um, and he does have a 75% chance of placing the 60% decrease defense and a decrease attack debuff on the attacker uh, for one turn when he's hit, which is great for Clan Boss. I've never used him in Clan Boss, but I have seen some stuff where I really want to get him in there. Um, I want a dupe of him, but... Uh, yeah, you know how, how we all know how elusive those void legendaries are, especially when it comes to Krisk. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's no way the rates aren't lower for certain champions. There's no way. There's, they definitely tweak things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would definitely agree. I'm going to give some love to the other free-to-play friendly champion, Raz and Scarhide. He is also worth the grind to make sure you fuse him as soon as you can as a newer account, mid-game account, even end-game account. I mean got the um, AOE, a decreased turn meter, and has A3, decreased defense, and weakened as A2, and of course he hits three times and removes buffs on his A1, and all of those things are just uh, perfect for clan boss, for with the A1 and A2, and an A3 makes him viable in dungeons, arena, and a lot of other parts of the game as well, like, so he's, he is absolutely solid, he does massive damage in general, just sheer damage, so he also is great for clan boss, just for his pure damage alone, so he, he he's a great fit in there, um, and I remember just how much my damage improved when I got him into Clan Boss. Oh, he was a big carry for me when I got him. Um, I mean, just ab yeah, I, I agree, hundred percent. Absolutely worth taking the time to grind out that fusion for him. Uh, he he's an account changer, especially early mid game. Um, you know, or especially if you're free to play, even you know, because you may not have a ton of legendaries. You know, he is definitely worth it. I mean, he's phenomenal. He can fit anywhere. He's great for Fire Knight. Um, you know, just because, I mean, he's got that three hitter on his A1. So he is good. Um, Epics. This one's tough. Oh, Epic Lizardman. Yeah. Epic Lizardman. We all <laughs> cringe at that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Doom Tower. Gotta go Aox. Um, he was a big, he was a big boost for me to finally get Lizardman Faction Wars down, which was actually maybe a month ago. I finally got it down. Um, you know, two Rosins, Chris, and I don't even remember what all, Aox, and I don't remember what the other one was, some trash I've got stashed away. Um, but he does have a two hitter on his A1 for single target, and it does have a 10% chance of placing a 5% poison, uh, which is nice. Uh, his A2, he does have a 10% heal uh, on all allies by their 10% of their max HP. Um, and it also heals for an extra 2.5% for each debuff. Uh, his A3... Decreased attack, decreased crit rate, um, you know, and a possibility of a turn meter decrease. So just, uh, you know, he's a, he's, I'm not going to say he's a solid, he's a phenomenal champion, but he definitely helps. He's definitely good in Faction Wars. Um, he was a huge uh, carry for me in, in there. Um, and he does have a, you know, uh, increase of enemy uh, debuffs uh, by two turns. Um, so of two random debuffs by one turn uh, when he's attacked. So, you know, it is, he's not a phenomenal champion, but he's definitely helpful. I'd say probably more in faction wars than anything else. Um, but he did help me get, you know, get Lizardman down, um, you know, so worth building if you are struggling with Lizardman faction wars, uh, you know, which I know there's quite a few people that do just because, I mean, a lot of these legendaries, you know, you don't really get a ton of lizard men, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. The lizard men pull is interesting here. Like, I have Scathix and I, Aox, I have and Scathix, and I have just barely built them, but I haven't really played with them much yet. So, Scathix has amazing kit, 
but I haven't really worked with him yet, so I think I'm gonna, have, even though I think he might sound a little more interesting, like, one of, he might be one of my favorites, I think I gotta go with Jareg. Um, he's great for clan boss with decreased attack on his A1, increased defense and ally protect on the A2, and his passive continuous heal. So, like, he's a solid champion for, like, the Doom Tower bosses where you want to make sure you get a decreased attack in there, or he's great, especially, obviously, a lot of earlier mid-game people Jareg for clan boss for that decrease. And of course he's helpful in Faction Wars, keeping everyone alive with the Ally Protect before we had any sort of support besides Broadmaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Broadmaw is helpful. It's still worth doing. Not to say don't do it. If you don't have any other Reviver and you're trying to get through Faction Wars, he's helpful. Right. It's an easy fusion. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Skinwalkers. <sighs> I'm actually... I don't have a whole lot of legendaries from this one. I want Coronar so bad to pair with one of my <laughs> Manias. Uh, actually, do I have two? I don't know. But to pair with my Manaya. Uh, <laughs> but I do have to go Brachus on this one. I like Longbeard. He is a great, um, you know, he's a good champion. But Brachus, Fire Knight, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it was fairly recently I put him in my Fire Knight team. Um, I was actually playing with it in stream, and one of my viewers actually yelled at me because I had uh, Brachus benched on Fire Knight. Um, but, you know, so I did put him in. He, he, he did help speed it up a little bit. Uh, you know, he does have a heal on the A1. Um, you know, he does have a six hitter on his A2. First hit, 75% chance of placing a 25% weaken for three turns uh, and heals by 25% of the damage inflicted. And 50% uh, heals by 50% if there's a fear or true fear on. Um, but that six hitter, oh my God, <laughs> for Fire Knight? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It yeah, is. Yeah, I don't have one. You can tell um, I don't have one because I said that's annoying, not fun. <laughs> he, he is annoying in Arena uh, with his passive. Uh, unless you crack him with like Foley or you know something like that, gonna block a revive. Um, but if you don't and you you know you don't get that bl block revive off on him, he pops back up. He's just gonna waste your sorry, but you know he's gonna tear you <laughs> up. Um, whoo, almost let that one slip. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he, on his A3, he does have a 50% increase attack on all allies for three turns. Then he attacks one enemy three times. Uh, each hit, 50% chance of placing a true fear for one turn, 50% chance of placing a fear uh, on two random enemies for one turn if the true fear is uh, placed. Um, and then, I mean, we all know that annoying passive he's got. Uh, damage increases by 40% when his HP drops below 40%. The active revives <clears throat> with 20% HP when killed and immediately grants an extra turn. That is probably one of the most annoying passives. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. So, I have Coronar, but I'm not going to say Coronar. I'm actually going to say Norag. We're gonna, let's bring us back to the OG Hell Hades yep. damage mitigation clan boss team days. <laughs> Before he had his face on his YouTube, you know, back in the day. Let's go back. <laughs> but still, <laughs> I mean, Norag is such a beast. His A1 um, has a chance of placing block active skills. Um, and then block buffs on his A2 is so helpful in Faction Wars against those pesky Valks and all those annoying waves where you're trying to prevent them from popping up. Um, and then, of course, he's immune to stun, freeze, and sleep. Yep. And that's super helpful if you want him to be your stun target in a clan boss comp. And he has just, and then dam it decreases the damage taken by all allies that are under no active buffs by 25%. So there's damage mitigation there as well. Like He's just... He's a solid champion, he's great for progression there, and he certainly can be helpful in a lot of waves and dungeons, um, faction wars, clan boss OG style teams. <laughs> well, and that, you know, that 40%, uh, you know, increase uh, allied defense in dungeons. I mean, if you're, if you're working yeah, on great progression, aura, that 40% aura, yeah. is massive. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, this one's rough because, I mean, we get into epics and it's like, oh, <laughs> there's not <laughs> very much. Um, See, I like this. I'm, I'm okay with this. I mean, you have Hofuri's, uh, you know, I mean, he he's the revive for this faction, for Faction Morris. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Steel Skull, Fane, um, but that's really, I mean, about it. Basher I mean, is really, Basher's baby warlord. 
Yeah, I've got one. I've got one at 50 I'm going to build for Faction Wars because this faction I am having one Tough. nasty time with. You need um, that. You want Basher. Yeah. I've, and you want I've, little... Si yeah, it's fun. I've, I've got to get him built. Um, I'm going to have to go Fane. Um, Clan Boss Boss. Uh, great in Faction Wars. I um, Even though I don't use her in Clan Boss, I do use her on my Spider uh, Spider 20 farm team. Mm -hmm. um, the Great only vision. downside is that little 3% not to land her debuffs um, is brutal. Because if she doesn't land them, yeah, it doesn't go. But now I've got a second Septimus, and I'm going to play with the team. But, uh, I mean, you know, she does have a chance of stealing 5% turn meter uh, on the two-hitter on her A1. Um, you know, she's got the 75% chance of two 5% poisons and a decreased attack on her A2. Then her A3, massive, decreased defense, big version, 25%, weakened for three turns. The third hit heals the champion by 4% of her max HP for every debuff on the target. Now, I can only imagine how wild that would be if you pair her with a Vizier in, like, a traditional clan boss team. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a few runs, you know, a few turns in, you got a full debuff bar, and she just starts healing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, great group together for, like, a, um, well, even just a... The two man eater teams where you can put in a vizier and that'd be great for that too. I I do use Fane for my bad eater comp and she's great because you need that decreased defense weaken and poisons all in the same person because that's all you got. So <laughs> yeah, not many of those. Um, but I think I'm gonna go Steel Skull for my favorite Skinwalker. Um, he was super key in helping me finish faction wars. Um. And yeah, he also can be a decent clan boss champion, although his A2 with only a 20, well, what is it, books up to 30% chance to place a 5% poison. It's pretty low on that percentage. It does hit two times, so it's better if you have a counterattack in there, um, or if it, I don't know. I mean, he's okay for clan boss, but he's not great as the only poisoner, let's be honest. But the, the cleanse on the A2 and the increased defense um, and heal on the A3 are just such good support. When I finished... Faction Wars, I did put Steel Skull in my best Relentless gear, and just he was a huge part of success for that. Huge part of success. I'm going to have to build him. He's at 50 for me. <laughs> oh, he's the best support for that faction by far. Yeah, he's 50 I mean, naked. Before, no before he's existed, too, but, like, I think you still kind of need him. You don't want to have to die to, you know, you could prevent dying in the first place. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he's still at 50 naked and no masteries. Um, I've... Skinwalker, I, I, Steel Skull, Basher, that's your homework. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I got Skinwalker, Faction Wars. I have to grind oh. so much food right now. Oh, and baby little Sater, little uncommon at the bottom there. That was my key. Fif level 50 Sater. Level 50. Really? He helped me beat Faction Wars. Oh, I so that eat term, that guy decreased all the time. Decreased meter. Yeah, I he's that's that, I, I built I built one of them up. That's why I, he was my last piece of my puzzle for Faction Wars. For, that term meter to help control the boss. Okay. Boss sucks. If the boss doesn't go, you don't have to worry about it. This is very true. So. <laughs> He's really helpful. Another good. Don't. It's on the skinwalker right. note. Not exactly an epic or Lego, but it's probably an interesting place to stop for this half of the video. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, yeah, so uh, uncommon in skinwalkers. Helpful for faction wars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember. I'm going to have to build one. Oh, I just built Armager too, finally. Um. And I noticed, too, when I was looking for dupes of him to book him, guess what never showed up in the market until after I finished booking him? <laughs> oh, <laughs> then all of a sudden, now they're yeah. all over again. So, yeah, that's going to do us for this first half of the video. Ivy, thank you so much for coming, for coming by and hanging out. Uh, guys, if, we know you're going to want to see episode two. Well, I don't even say episode two. It's, uh, you know, part, part two. two. Definitely get over to Ivy's channel and make sure you see part two over there. Also, guys, give her a sub, give her some love. And uh, she's an absolutely awesome content creator, awesome person. <laughs> Ivy, thank you so much again, and I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <laughs>